Hi, this is Hugh for Guitar.com, and in this video, we're going to be doing fun stuff with a parts caster. The owner has various plans for this guitar, but the main idea is to turn this from a uh, humbuckered Telecaster into an Esquire. So we're going to be ditching the neck pickup, uh, ditching the pick guard. You're going to go to a white pick guard. You're going to change the knobs to flat tops because the owner prefers those. You're going to be changing the pickup and also I'm going to be changing these brass saddles for steel saddles. So we're going for a more, more of a kind of 56, 57 Esquire kind of vibe. Also going to be doing a little bit of relicking work, uh, trying to get this lacquer to check because this does appear to be nitrocellulose on both the body and the neck. So this is just a fun guitar really and uh, the owner bought it to scratch his Billy Gibbons itch. So the first thing to do is to get this all stripped down, uh, get all the electronics out of here and get red this ready to go into the freezer to get some lacquer checking. Okay, I think I'll just go and weigh this just to, out of curiosity, but it does feel pretty light. Well, it's just a fraction over two kilos, so it's not the lightest tele body I've ever worked with, but it's by no means the heaviest. It's a, it's a pretty decent weight. BCG is written in the neck pocket, I don't know what that stands for. Yeah, but the neck, well that looks like it might be genuine fender to me. Yeah, and it's a nitro finish as well, which I think is really cool. And it's dated April 17th, 2000. And I'm just going to take the tuners off as well because uh, I don't want any moisture getting inside of those really. For this project, I'm going to be using this wiring diagram that I just downloaded from Six String Supplies. And uh, it's immediately apparent that none of the existing wiring or barely any of it is actually going to be uh, usable in this context. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically strip out everything on this standard Telecaster wiring and uh, clean the switch, make sure all the contacts are, are completely clean and free of solder uh, and remove this hulking grate capacitor here and get this thing completely rewired. You always need some way of supporting the piece that you're working on and you can do a lot worse than use the actual body of the guitar itself. All I'm going to do in is putting this uh, piece of kitchen towel there to protect the lacquer, which is ironic really because I just spent uh, a good few hours knocking lumps out of it. Uh, so I'll be pretty relaxed if I get some solder splashes. But anyway, this just holds it firm enough so I can... Uh, I can do all the work that I want to do on it. Um, if, if you want, you can even put the screws in kind of from the other side and hold it completely rigid, but this should be secure enough. So I'm going to use a pretty hot soldering iron for this. And the other thing I like to do is use, if I'm desoldering from pot casings and stuff like that, I need uh, quite a large soldering iron tip. The switch is all cleared off and cleaned now. Um, all the excess solder is gone, so I'm just going to get these pots out. Fortunately, that wasn't wrapped. I'm only going to be reusing one of these pots uh, because I'm going to put a push pull in the tone position for the uh, Oil City pickups uh, coil tap. Uh, so I'm probably going to use this one on the basis that as the tone control it's probably had less use and it's also an awful lot cleaner and less gummed up with solder than the existing volume control but this will get reused somewhere or other. 
So I'm just going to work from the diagram here basically, uh, simple as, and you can watch me wire this up. But uh, first I'll, I'll just put in these uh, little capacitors. This is a 0.047 microfarad, it's a Russian military paper oil one. Uh, you can buy these very cheaply online. Um, this is the, the magic ingredient. It's the uh, 0.0047 microfarad capacitor, which is basically going to go from the switch to the to ground, and it's going to basically provide the tone shaping for the uh, front position on the switch, which uh, would normally be a neck pickup, but of course this is now going to be a one pickup guitar. One thing I like about these little green capacitors is they're almost perfect size for bridging the gap between uh, the tone control on the Telecaster and the volume control. What I'm going to do is do like a tack solder joint here on the lug of the volume pot and then I'm going to solder onto the casing of the volume pot. This is just a quick solder joint just to hold it into position. I might go back later and tidy that up but it's actually looking pretty good. So that's actually bridging from this outside lug here on the volume control and it's going to the center tag, center lug of the tone control. Just get this soldered onto here. I'm using a very hot iron for this, 450 degrees. Snip off the excess then, just uh, tidy up the joint. Okay, I'm just gonna get inside here now and just solder it to the tone control. Okay, so that's the first connection done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this capacitor between the volume control and the switch. It's kind of got a little kind of jumper connection as well from, from this tag to this one here. So I'm just going to snip off some of the excess length. This capacitor, if you're interested, is a Mallory 150, uh, which is a capacitor I really like in amplifiers. I think they sound great and they're not particularly expensive. And they're really easy to get hold of. Right, so basically this lug of the tone control here, this outside lug, is going to come all the way across to this tag here and then jump her across to this one. So I'm going to do that now. I might just put a little hook on that. Just need to expose a little bit of uh, wire from the end of this the cable. Just tucking that in there like that. I'm just going to bend it across, put it down tight, tuck the wire under the pot casing like that. It's good to try and be neat with uh, Telecaster control wiring because often you haven't got a, you haven't got a great deal of space in the control cavity route and things can kind of touch the sides and get a little bit crowded in there. For the next connection, this is uh, it's kind of cool, the, in the conventional wiring scheme, the heart of the pickup is, would come to this one and then bridge across to here, bridge across to here, jumper across to this tag here and then onto the outside tag of the volume control. Uh, but because the, um, the pickup, the hot wire of the All City pickup is gonna 
well, there's two of them, they're going to come to the switch first and then come from the center tag of this switch back across to here. Well, actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it directly onto the volume control and then take another wire from the volume control to here and then do all my bridging connections. So it's a little bit different to, to the way it's usually done with the Eldred mod, but uh, we're just adding an extra layer of complication here. So, so yeah, so this is quite fiddly because the tags are very small openings for the wires on this uh, particular push-pull switch. I think it's uh, manufactured by Bournes. Okay, that's on there quite tightly. Just let that uh, solidify. Okay. When you're uh, making connections that you know there's going to be two or three wires going to the same tag, if possible, just hold off doing your soldering until all the wires are in there and then you can solder them all at one hit, otherwise uh, things can get a little bit kind of messy and complicated. Okay, so now I need a wire going from this tag on the volume control across to here, here, here and here. If I do this one first, then I can get this uh, soldered up nicely. This one's coming across to the first tag of the switch here. Okay, I'm going to make two connections to this tag, so I'm going to hold off with the soldering just for now. And I'm going to bring a little link wire under these two tags and across to this one. Again, I'm just going to put a little hook on it just to hold it in place, but also make it easy to remove if that's ever needed to be done. All nice, shiny, brand new solder joints, which are generally a good indication that it's going to be a, a sound and long-lasting joint. Right, I'm just going to use a bit of exposed wire to go from around the corner here to connect these three tags. Okay, it's looking good. Two tags to solder, and we're almost there. Okay, so the two things that haven't been connected so far are the uh, output jack and the uh, the pickup. So it's time to mount the pickup. Um, I'll get that onto the guitar body and once it's there I'll connect uh, that up to the switch and uh, I'll get the output jack uh, sorted as well. So this is the these are the wires from the output jack and these are the three wires from the bridge pickup. I didn't show you the procedure for putting the uh, mounting the bridge pickup and uh, and, and the bridge itself, because I did that in, a, in a, another video quite recently, so you can check that out on guitar.com. But what I do want to do is find out which of these is the hot wire. So if I put uh, the black probe from the meter, uh, which I've set to 20k uh, on the black wire, and I touch the white wire, reach just a fraction of a 10k. If I touch the yellow wire, about 15.6. Okay, so the yellow wire is the hot one. Now, the owner wants the cool setting to be the default uh, position, which will be with the push-pull switch in. So, basically, I got to bear that in mind when I'm hooking up the, uh, the wires to the switch. Okay, so all the connections have been made. Uh, this is the output jack wire has come to the uh, center tag of the volume control. These are my ground connections. This one's coming from the pickup and this one's coming from the output jack. Got my hot and cold wires. Well, not hot, hot and cold, hot and hotter 
for the bridge pickup and this is then the output of the switch that is going across to the volume control but also jumping across to no less than four connections on the switch. This is the preset tone capacitor for the uh, front position and this is the regular 0.047 uh, tone capacitor that you can get on pretty much any Telecaster. So this all seems to be done dusted and I'm just going to flip it over. Press it down and that should go in there without any problem at all. Now you may have noticed that uh, this is actually a split shaft uh, potentiometer and it's a problem you often get into with guitars that require solid shaft parts for the knobs but um, you want to do some trick wiring with push pull switches and what have you and they're all split shaft uh, so here's a really cool solution to it you can buy these from all parts UK various other suppliers there are these little brass sleeves that basically slip over the end of a split shaft like that effectively turning one of these into a solid shaft and then you have no problems with uh, the the shaft actually compressing when you tighten the screw and you know you end up with a wonky control knob okay that looks perfect and we're done if you're into vintage telecasters and indeed esquires um, there's probably one thing here that's like a glaring anomaly uh, with regard to the color of the color of the body the white pick guard and also the flat top uh, knobs that i've put on here um, it's these brass saddles now recently I've, I've had a complete change of heart with regard to telecaster bridge saddles um, I've always liked brass, I like the way it kind of softens the travel, warms up the mid-range, just gives these guitars a slightly fuller tone. But of late, I've, I've started really getting into steel saddles. So I'm going to convert this guitar to steel saddles. I just think it'll be more in keeping. I just really like the snap and the kind of the harmonic content and the, just the, the way that these kind of give the the Telecaster sound that I, I really like. Um, they just kind of got more bite and more kind of twang and aggression to them. Another thing worth noting is that these turned up looking really, really shiny and brand new. And it's not the look that uh, the owner or I wanted. Uh, I usually relic metal parts in PCB etchant solution or using the electronic method but instead what I did with these was just let them sit in hydrochloric acid fumes and they've come out really well it's just dulled them down but there's no corrosion uh, they just look really nice it took about took about three hours for these but uh, I'm pleased with the way they've turned out and I'm just gonna swap them out now Okay, so I've got all three saddles installed now. Um, they're looking pretty good, I think. Uh, it's set up very approximately to what it was before, but hopefully it'll play straight off and it'll make for a really quick and easy uh, setup. So the guitar is ready to have its neck put back on now, uh, be strung back up, and let's, uh, let's see what it sounds like.
Well, I must confess I was pretty surprised by the range of tones that you can get out of this guitar with the Aldred mod. Uh, traditionally, Esquires have maybe two usable sounds and one not so usable one, but the Aldred mod just makes the front position sound kind of like a Les Paul Jr. to me. It's really, really useful and I, and I absolutely love it. I think uh, some benefit might be had from messing around with the Aldred mod capacitor a little bit. A smaller value might allow a little bit more high frequency content to come through. But by and large, I think that the, the whole concept of it is fantastic. So the guitar is going back to its owner now and I hope he has as much fun and pleasure out of it as I did doing the project and also playing the guitar. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.